almost had a casualty. You all, it is time for the May Fragrance Awards. How is that even possible? Where did the last month go? If you're newer to this channel, this is where I do sort of a roundup of the fragrances that I wore over the past month and share my thoughts about them in some faux award categories. It's not all of the fragrances I wore. We really don't have time to go through all of that, but it's a pretty good sampling of it. And it's a way to talk about a lot of fragrances at one time, including fragrances that don't get a lot of love and hype on YouTube anymore, but really still should. So I'm going to jump in with the category of best for season. And so thinking about May as a month, the beginning of the month starts off maybe a little bit cool. It really depends. I'm here in central Virginia. Sometimes it starts off like straight summer. May has been rather temperate. And when I think about May, I think about summer too. It's like right on the edge of summer and you start to sort of crave the warm weather temperature kinds of fragrances and all of that. So I really want to feature one that's kind of an in-between fragrance. You can wear it all year round, but it definitely has some summery aspects. And that's Ariana Grande's Cloud. This is the intense version. I have the original Cloud, which is fantastic. I really enjoy that fragrance. I have to say, I didn't love Cloud when I first tried it at Ulta, but I, it grew on me and now it's sort of among the loved fragrances in my collection. This one is like Cloud, except deeper and creamier of a fragrance. You get a beautiful whipped cream note, as well as this gorgeous, creamy coconut musk and a little bit of an aromatic touch in here from from lavender. I find this to be a very comforting fragrance, one that's absolutely appropriate to wear sort of in the dead of winter because it does have some substance and holds its own against the stark temperatures of the winter time, but also here in the summer can be considered a luxe summer fragrance. I don't think that I included this in my luxe summer fragrances video, probably because I regard this a little bit as did I put it in the pinned comment of that video? I don't remember, but it has enough coconut that you can consider this a coconut fragrance, but I think kind of it's equal parts whipped cream, coconut, and that musk. And so in that sense, it's one that can take you from, you know, early morning, cozy fragrance when the mist is still on the grass and it's still kind of cool in the morning, all the way through the evening and into date night. It has some sex appeal to it also. Just a really versatile, lovely fragrance for late spring and really kind of all year round. In the category of best everyday fragrance for May, as the weather particularly warmed up here toward the end of May, I enjoyed wearing Lancome Eau d'Azur. So this is available on FragranceNet and sites like that. And you can see I started to suck this down a little bit here. I did purchase this several months ago, but really haven't worn it much other than to test it. But boy, did I wear it. And the reason is you can spray as much of this as you want. You're not going to offend a soul. This was a crowd favorite here in my house of just five people. <laughs> so no, I didn't go out to like a concert and have the entire venue of people rushing up to me telling me how lovely I smelled. But let me tell you, I got a tough crowd in this house. So this is mostly a citrus fragrance. You get lemon, but I love that it's also brightened up and made a little bit interesting by a peony and rose combination and a little bit of a woody background. The woody background is very faint. So if you think about like Chanel or Fresh, if you've tried that fragrance, it's equal in my mind parts citrus and woodiness. I think this kind of scratches that itch of having a lovely, light, very crowd pleasing, I think, based on the family's reaction, citrus fragrance that has some florals and just hints of woodiness and is sort of a classic in the Lancome lineup. Nobody really talks about this fragrance. So Eau de Zor, best every day. Y'all go ahead and like drown yourself in this fragrance and go strut around in your best spring self. In the category of best special occasion, again, considering that it is late into spring here and maybe the evenings are getting to be a little bit balmy. So you want a fragrance that kind of reflects the season. Here's a fragrance that has gotten better with time. I wasn't quite ready for it when I first purchased it. I thought it was nice the whole time. I just don't know that I understood it quite as much as I do today and have tried it a lot more and have come to fall in love with it. Tiziana Terenzi Draco. I guess you can pronounce it Draco too, but considering it's an Italian perfume house, I'm going to go with what I think is maybe an Italian pronunciation, Draco. <laughs> and oh, oh my goodness, <laughs> what a gorgeous peachy, musky fragrance with a beautiful, sweet, 
hair notes, heavy vanilla. So it's both like sweet and musky and fruity, but not like a berry fruitiness. It's more in the pear peachy direction. So imagine a mashup of like a sweet pear and a mature peach where, you know, the peach has ripened and it's super juicy. All of that together in here. Tonka bean also to give it even more depth. I really enjoy this fragrance. I think it would hold its own all day long. It's a long lasting fragrance and projects quite a bit. And I think is a really pretty fragrance where you can just smell the beauty of it sort of all around you, enveloping you all day long and would take you into evening and do really well in an evening special occasion kind of setting. So you can shop Tiziana Terenzi fragrances on all kinds of sites. I do have a discount code for So Avant Garde which is Veronica 20 that is in the description box. And you can also shop for Tiziana Terenzi fragrances on Joma shop. And I have a landing page that is an affiliate page in my description box as well. So check those out. The next category is the sexiest fragrance that I wore in the month of May. Shut your mouth. Okay. <laughs> I sampled this fragrance, liked it a lot and thought I want a bottle of this. Well, I went and got the bottle and it's even better than the sample was. You know, sampling can be a little misleading, my friends. It doesn't always tell you the full story of the, the fragrance, but <gasps> this is a house that I've been really interested in. I own Carnal Cacao from Maison Tahite, and this one is called Venecstasy. Venecstasy. This had been making the rounds on YouTube and I was like, that sounds really, really good. I wanna check that out. The sample was good enough for me to take the chance and purchase the full bottle. Mm. Okay. <laughs> this smells like vanilla extract, not your cheap imitation vanilla. I'm talking about like the vanilla extract, the real deal Evander Holyfield stuff that you want to use in baking. A beautiful, like really sticky caramel note. And then it also has this beautiful sandalwood. I think there's coconut and a few other notes but that's really what stands out to me. Vanilla, like a deep brown sugary vanilla. It smells like vanilla 28 from Kaali, like that level of vanilla brown sugariness with caramel and sandalwood. So if you like vanilla 28, but you're really wanting something more, something even a little deeper than that, check out a sample of an ecstasy and see what you think. I really do like these bottles. I think they are handsomely made and look really good among the collection. So this is a sexy one. This had me sniffing myself. So in the category of biggest surprise, I won't go on and on about this because I did go on and on about this in my Lux summer vacation fragrances video. Here's the thumbnail and I'll link it below for you. Check that out. I talked about this fragrance arriving and me wondering where it had been all my life. I did sample it. I thought the sample was great, but I was like, oh, it's a little body sprayish. But I went ahead and took the chance and purchased the bottle and boy, am I glad that I did. Leisure in Paradise from Simone Andrioli. I do have Malibu Party in the Bay, which is fantastic. This holds its own even against that. Like it's just as good. <sighs> this makes my eyes water in that I get so happy when I smell it. So this is like a deep, really sweet summer fruit fragrance. I think it's papaya and passion fruit that are the two fruits that are in here along with a creamy coconut. Well, maybe it depends. Sometimes it feels like a milky coconut. Some days it feels like a creamy coconut and vanilla. And there's a little bit of woodiness in here also, and maybe some other notes that we're not aware of. But when I tell you that even sniffing from the cap is like, man, that's good. <laughs> when you try it on skin, it is just like chef's kiss phenomenal. So I won't go on and on. Check out that other video if you're interested, but wow. In the category of best bottle, I've got to give it up. And this is our first from the house. Darren and I, my husband, we did a video where we talked about a sample set from the house. And it is Florico's Between Two Trees. Well, first of all, the house is rather expensive. So see if you can get them on sale. But this bottle, it's, you know, simple and sleek. What does it say on the back here? Oh my gosh, it's got a haiku on the back. I didn't even notice that. It says the owl is watching twilight between two trees. Isn't that precious? <laughs> so you get the bottle and they all say the name of the fragrance and then Floraiku. And then you get this top part. Here is the owl between the two. Why am I just noticing that it's actually an owl between two trees? Okay. There's artwork on the back. And what I love about this is that this, this then becomes, 
becomes the holder for a travel spray that comes with the bottle. So when you actually order the full bottle, it comes in a nice presentation. You get this, you get a cap for that, and then you get this cap that you can take off and put the little travel spray in. So we actually like the caps and we're keeping it like that. This is sitting on my husband's shelf. It does lean a tad bit masculine, not so much that I can't wear it. And it is a delightful, aromatic, woody, citrusy fragrance. The notes listed are mostly just like a mate, which is a type of a tea note. It has a little bit of earthiness to it. it smells a little bit like uh, wet dirt, maybe a little like hint of patchouli, like very, very slight. I, don't, I can't say there's patchouli in here, but mate gives you a little bit of that. And then a tiny bit of grapefruit and a vetiver note. It also has just like the slightest bit of other notes like cardamom and ginger. Those are very, very faint if they're in there. Mostly you get that sort of earthy mate, like a woodiness also from the combination of that with the vetiver and that hint of like that grapefruit oil. There's a lot from this line that I'm really interested in. Anyway, the bottle. Hello, no competition. In the category of worst bottle, <laughs> I feel like I'm betraying this fragrance because the actual fragrance inside is really fantastic. But like, what was bond number nine thinking with this pattern? This is like that 80s, like Argyle print. Is that what it's called? And ew, 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 ew. And it's got this really sort of gaudy. Um, I guess you can use this as a bauble if you would like. like what, what, what is, what is, what's happening? I, you got the bracelets. I guess you can use it as a, I, whatever y'all whatever okay <laughs> but let me tell you about this fragrance because this is one bottle that i will forgive because the fragrance is absolutely beautiful really nice combination of mostly white florals gardenia and jasmine and then it has a lang, -a -lang in it and it also has musk and a linden blossom note wanted to make sure i'm checking in the the notes here for you and this projects nicely it leaves a beautiful trail a lovely sillage and i think it's one of those like crowd pleasing spring and summer florals that a lot of people would like it's not heavy it's not cloying it's not like an overwhelming you know powerhouse floral of the 80s or anything like that i swear this has tuberose in it even though it's not listed in the notes there's something in here that's giving me a tuberose vibe but it's beautiful in that it's both like light white floral and it has a nice creamy muskiness to it that i think make this a crowd pleasing fragrance a favorite of hubby's he loves this when i put this on the kids like it too and you know i just i can't recommend this enough as a beautiful like must try floral. I don't think I put this in my must try florals video, but it certainly has a place among the sort of best florals for late spring into the summer, Central Park West. But what is going on with this bottle, y'all? Whoa, this reminds me of like Joan Rivers in the 80s. It reminds me like of all the Heather movies, like from the that time period. It reminds me of kids trying to look preppy in those outfits. I mean, we can go on and on, but the fragrance is magnifique. In the category of favorite blind buy, and then we'll do not a safe blind buy as a favorite. And this is getting harder to find, I understand, but it's La Nuit Tresor uh, a la Folie. This is the sweet vanilla version of La Nuit Tresor. This is, it's just deep and it's sexy and it's sweet and it's a great date night fragrance, a great wearing to bed fragrance. I get moderate longevity out of this and a very soft projection. Although if you look on for grants and reviews, people feel like it's long lasting. So I don't know if I just go nose blind to this after a while, but it has a really intoxicating opening, just like this delicious sweet vanilla that I think is very feminine and very easy to wear and soft enough that you could wear it year round and definitely into late spring and early fall. I don't know, dead of summer, you know, maybe it's iffy, but definitely pushing on both sides of summer. So Nanoui Trezor a la Folie, beautiful uh, blind buy that I do not regret at all. So then in the category of not a safe blind buy, and just to be clear, I really do still like this fragrance. <laughs> it's not a safe blind buy. The day that I wore it, my poor husband was, he felt like his nostrils were assaulted. He was like, what, what is that? That smells horrible. Please wash that off. And I was like, what are you talking about? I smell amazing. <laughs> and I'm really embarrassed because I went to meet a colleague for coffee and I had doused myself in this. Thank God, like we sat outside at this cafe and there was a lot of air flowing, or maybe that was a bad thing because maybe it was pushing the fragrance <laughs> in this person's direction. So I sampled this. And by the way, I'm talking about Armani Privé Eyeless. Eyeless. 
<laughs> Iris Celadon, Iris Celadon, which I believe is the clay that people make, that potters make jade out of. Jade, what am I talking about? Jade ceramic or jade colored ceramic or something like that. Those things are related. Jade colored pottery, which well, here you go with the top. Anyway, if you look at the notes on Fragrantica for this, it tells you that this is a musky iris with some chocolate and with some patchouli. I guess that's true. Like when I smell that, yeah, I guess I can detect all of that. But more than anything, this, I think I said that this reminds me of like the mist that's rising up from a field in the distance in the morning, like the the sort of cloud that's hovering, cloud of mist that's hovering over a field. This reminds me somewhat of that type of experience. Now, yes, it is heavy on the iris. It does have muskiness, but I feel like the fragrance is wispier than perhaps my husband's poor nostrils experience. <laughs> he seemed really assaulted by this fragrance. I do like it. I think I will wear it more sparingly and definitely not around my husband because he did not care for this at all. But I like this and I find this unique and different. Uh, there aren't many other things in my collection like this. Now that I know that it has patchouli and chocolate in it, because I don't think I had thought about that when I sampled it, it does have some correlation, like some relationship to Choco Violet from Mancera, if you're familiar with that, in the sense that there's like this soft kind of cacao in the background, like a dusty cacao chocolate thing happening. So yeah, I guess I can see that. And yeah, I guess I can detect a little bit of the patchouli, but because of the impression I had when I first sampled it, this to me remains like a misty field kind of a, a fragrance. Very clean and simple and subtle for summer. However, apparently others disagree with me. So just keep that in mind. We're going to go to the category of overhyped and hidden gem and then do the bottom, middle, and top three of the month. And in the category of overhyped, you know, I'm a little hesitant to put this in here because it is a nice fragrance, but the reviews just hype this up so much that I was expecting maybe something a little bit different. That's not to say that this isn't a nice fragrance and it's not to say that I wouldn't get a full bottle at some point. I'm just not rushing out right now to get that. And that's from the maker, it's called Libertine. And so I ordered this travel spray in the Sephora sale and the travel spray was not an expansion of y'all. This was, I feel like this was in either the high thirties or the low forties. And for a travel spray, I kind of wanted it to knock my socks off. This is a nice citrus. So let me be really clear. It's a bright zesty citrus with lemon and ginger and something else. I forget if it's grapefruit or maybe like a mandarin orange or something in that direction. And it has a woody base to it. This was moderate in terms of longevity and projection as well and all of that. So it was fine. The performance was fine. The scent was fine. I guess I was expecting something a little bit more mind-blowing. That is really difficult, you all, when you have a large collection and a lot of fragrances that you're constantly trying. So that's not the fault of this fragrance. But as far as like fragrance collecting and YouTube drama... <laughs> and hyping things up. This one maybe is a little bit overhyped than what it like truly deserves, but I'm definitely going to use this up and probably take this with me on vacation this summer. And I'll report back to you all like how I truly, truly feel about this, but an initial sniff and wear, because I did wear this, I was like, okay, all right. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Moving along. In the category of hidden gem, I had to go with Net Rose Parade, Net Rose Parade. So I got this also in the Sephora sale. I'm not the craziest about the bottles. I think they're, I don't love the shape, but that's neither here nor there. It's not, you know, offensive or bothersome in any way. I, for someone who isn't like enamored of all rose fragrances, I have some nice rose fragrances. It isn't a note that I, you know, reach for often. I enjoy the ones that I have for sure. And I think there are some really really fantastic rose fragrances on the market. I don't gravitate toward rose. This fragrance I gravitate toward. I really enjoyed wearing this. It is one of the brightest, happiest rose fragrances that I have tried. I remember sampling this and immediately being sort of shocked in a happy way, like, oh, this is really, really pretty, really spring-like, really zesty, really youthful and happy. So on the website, it has only three notes listed, rose, yeah, you get a lot of rose, <laughs> neroli. And it's, by the way, the rose is a youthful rose, like a fresh, you know, bright, dewy rose. Neroli, I can't say that I pick up a lot of citrus, maybe some citrus that adds to like the brightness of the fragrance, like fragrance, like picks it up, adds some zest to it. And then it has vanilla bean. And so, 
you know, do I get a lot of vanilla? No, but there is some sweetness and some depth in the background so that it's not just a, a sheer light rose. Like it has some body to it. It has some body, yaddy, yaddy, y'all. <laughs> so this was a nice surprise and a nice addition to my collection. It had moderate to long longevity. It performed really decently. It wasn't like, you know, super duper long lasting or anything like that. And was really quite a joy to wear. It's a happy feeling fragrance, like a pick me up kind of a kind of a fragrance. So then in the bottom three, and as with the past few months, these are all fragrances that I really, really like. They're in the bottom three because of some factor, not because I don't like them. So I'll start off with one that I really enjoy the scent profile for. Boy, is this a super delicious citrus fragrance. This is Pavra Pomelo from Atelier Materi. You all know that I love these bottles. I have Cacao Porcelana and I have Santal Blonde from this line as well. And everything in the sample set was pretty good. I think there might've been one that I wasn't crazy about and I wasn't, I don't remember what that was, but even that was nice. This is very much, if you're familiar with pomelo, the fruit, it's it's basically like a grapefruit. It's a, it's a hybrid of grapefruit and something else, I forget. But it's got that grapefruit tartan, tartness to it. And so this is like a peppery grapefruit fragrance with a woody background. And it's like delightful. You spray this on and you're like, yes, I'm going to smell citrusy and lovely and springy and bright and zesty and have a little bit of character from that pepper and woodiness and it just stays soft so that's my dilemma with it in terms of it being in the low category definitely one that's going to stay in my collection definitely one that i'm going to enjoy wearing and definitely one that i'm going to have to sort of douse myself in as the day goes on i would say for this fragrance i feel like i spritzed it on in the morning and maybe it took me to about lunchtime before i was like wanting more i was like i need to spray more of poivre pomelo but i really like this fragrance the actual scent is just like mouth-wateringly delicious with that grapefruit you have to like grapefruit well it's pomelo but same kind of sort of scent from it with the pepperiness if you don't like pepper stay far away if you don't like woodiness mm -mm. and if you don't like grapefruit but if you're into that sort of uh deep citrus for spring maybe check this out just know that you'll get a softer scent after a while then for the exact same reasons in the low category, another beauty of a fragrance like wow, this is in my coconut video that has either posted or is about to post uh, when I play this, I'm not sure, but it's Healy Cocobello, Healy Cocobello. Gorgeous bottle and label, very sort of minimalistically classy. And I consider this to be like a dry, almost husky, what I call a husky coconut, which what I mean by that is it's a little bit on the woody side for coconut. It's not the creamiest. It does have a little bit of milkiness, like a lactonic touch to it, but it's not creamy and thick and, you know, super delicious like some of your other really sort of lush summer fragrances. This is on the drier side and very much in the direction of like you're walking to the beach and you have to pass through some woody area first before you get out to the beach and there's uh droppings from palm trees like some of the bark has come off and is on the ground and the smell of like that woodiness combined with the distant coconut combined with this lovely greenness like a really soft green touch to this fragrance makes this fantastic when you first spray it on, like it's intoxicating for me when you first spray it on. And for about, I would say the first maybe hour or so, maybe even two ish. And then about the third hour mark into the fourth, it gets really soft on the skin, you know, and maybe about like four or five hours, you can barely smell it anymore and you have to respray. And for this to be a rather pricey fragrance, you know, you just have to think that through if that's a commitment you want to make. I thought yes, and I did happen to have like a gift card when I purchased this. I was able to buy this like half off, you know, with my own money. And it's just, it's really good. Like a really refined summer coconut fragrance, more so like the impression of coconut than the actual like fleshy coconut. Really, really uh, a unique fragrance. And then a fragrance that I really do like and have a lot of admiration <laughs> For a lot of admiration, but in this house, it is not appreciated. I think for a lot of folks, it just smells a little bit old fashioned, a little bit too mature, and maybe kind of vintagey in a way that they don't appreciate. And it's Coco Eau de Parfum from Chanel. This is like the classic, you know, Chanel DNA. It's this like spicy, ambery fragrance. It has some sweetness. It has a little bit of florals in the background. But more than anything, it's like a sweet, spicy amber. And yes, it is vintage. Yes, it is mature. And you know, not everybody's into this, but I do have a small bottle. It's gotten even sort of richer as it sat on the shelf. 
I do like this a lot. It's one that I, yes, it is a mature fragrance. And yes, it could be a special occasion fragrance and maybe one that's better suited for like the deep of winter and not warm days. I like it, but I just have to be kind of picky about when I wear this because it is not appreciated <laughs> at this house. All right, so that's my bottom three. Let's get to the middle three. So let's jump into this middle three category and look. My gosh, these are good. I talked about this recently. Actually, I think I talked about this in the last month's fragrance awards. Yes, I did in the April at the beginning. Le Monde Beau from Kenzo. Okay, available, I think, still on FragranceNet. Check this out. Oh, wow. So there's something so. Look, first of all, look how cute the bottle is. It says Kenzo here. I won't go on and on because I've talked about this before, but what you get here is this gorgeous aromatic basil note. You have to like basil. So if you have had that sort of between your fingers and smelled it from your, your hand as you're, you're cooking with it or whatever, the fresh basil leaf and white florals, citrus, and a woodiness. Really unique fragrance. I don't have anything else in my collection like this. The only reason it's in the middle is because the longevity, I would say, is moderate. It's like average. And I really, in my heart of hearts, want this to be a super beast mode fragrance. I want this to project far. I want it to last all day and tonight because I just adore it. Nothing wrong with its longevity, except that it's more on the short-lived side than maybe a beast mode fragrance. That's all. You know, you're going to get like a half a day out of this. Nothing wrong with that. You don't need every fragrance to, you know, last 24 to 48 <laughs> hours. But this is one that I wish did because it's really quite unique and beautiful. So for the same reasons, I'm putting Jo Malone's Scarlet Poppy in the middle. This is so friggin' fraggin' good. <laughs> now, you, I, I'm not even looking at notes for you all. I'm just going to tell you, this smells exactly, exactly like when you peel open a fresh can, a fresh jar or whatever of Play-Doh. So if you played with Play-Doh in your youth, you know what I'm talking about. There's something sort of intoxicating about that initial blast of Play-Doh smell in the way that hypnotic poison used to be, but is no longer. That's kind of what this reminds me of. Maybe without the florals, like is it almond that's in here? I think there's something like almond or maybe in the direction of marzipan, maybe without quite the sweetness, but absolutely a beautiful Play-Doh scent in the best way, in the best way. <laughs> it's a really sort of intoxicating fragrance in that sense, except it's soft. It's soft. Like I can overspray myself with this and barely get like a nice little scent bubble, uh, you know, and it's soft during the day and maybe goes like a half a day or so, I don't know, four to six hours or something in that range. So I'm really wishing that this fragrance, there's a sweetness to this too, a really nice, delightful, sweet accord. I don't know if it's vanilla or something else that's in here that's making it feel like a little bit denser and sweeter, but delightful, delightful. I just, I want it to show out a little bit more. And then the last one in the middle category for the exact same reason is a fragrance that reminds me of that very beautiful young lady. Like I used to be a teacher and we would have these young people that were just really absolute joys, but they were shy. They were just a little bit shy and you were like, speak up a little bit more, show, show out a little bit more. You're talented and you're beautiful. And that is Kayali Utopia Vanilla Coco 21. Y'all know these names are just like the longest. I always str struggle with these super long names. I'm like about to hear on this one and we'll probably continue to suck it down this summer. This is just, this is everything you want a summer fragrance to be. It is, it's so creamy white floral, coconut, and yellow floral deliciousness. I'm not even looking up the notes. It smells like some frangipani, like some creamy frangipani, creamy coconut, beautiful white florals. It leans more in the floral direction than in the beachy coconut direction, but there's no denying that that like beachy coconut DNA is in there, or maybe like tropical garden DNA, right? With the the coconut. And it's just, it's delicious. It's a freaking delicious, really refined, beautiful smell. A little bit on the shyer side. You do get a nice projection, like bubble, you know, bubble, like you can't see my arm, but like bubble, <laughs> but it's not going to go like super far into the next room. And it is going to fade about half day, maybe sooner. Some people get greater longevity out of this. I suppose if you layer it over an oil, it can go like forever and ever. But this is one I wish would show out just a little bit more because it's just delicious. Top three. These are all bomb.com. <laughs> Delina La Rose. Absolutely fantastic for deep into the spring and into the early summer. 
non-offensive, rose, peony, watery notes kind of a fragrance, aquatic in the sense that it feels thin, it feels, it gives you like that, just the watery texture, like the bottle tells you what this smells like. I am a big peony lover, uh, like, you know, just told you how I felt about rose earlier in the video, but the combination of both of those in here is very, very, very delightful to the nose, easy, crowd-pleasing fragrance, a little bit musky, but more than anything, super clean, fresh, and light for spring. Another one that it's, it's long-lasting and it's projecting, and you can douse yourself in it without offending anyone. Just a delight to wear. This was really, really good, really good. This could have been the biggest surprise of the month, but I really wanted to put it in the top three. So one that I sampled and really liked and then got nervous to buy. I don't know what happened to me. And I was like, maybe I'm, I'm having like, you know, second, second, what is it called? Second thoughts. I'm having second thoughts, like doubts, because I kept reading reviews and people were dissatisfied with it. Sometimes you all, you have to take a chance and try something for yourself despite the reviews. This is Bond Number no. 9 Gold Coast. Really interesting bottle with like the holographic, you know, symbols of Bond Number no. 9 in it. It's it's opaque and see-through at the same time. Like, so, you know, here's the, the level of the, the fluid right now. This smells to me amazing. <laughs> I smelled it and it was one that I didn't know was projecting as far as it did and not in a loud way, but like in an intoxicating way. Everyone around me, meaning my family, really enjoyed this fragrance and thought it was beautiful. This has a nice, really like uh, pronounced watermelon type of feel to it, like a very thin watermelon type of note. It's also more like on the watery side, fruity, a little bit, you know, it's, it reminds me a little bit of like Delina La Rose and the type of like uh, aquatic nature of this fragrance. But this is very much like if New West, if you remember that fragrance from Aramis, which is discontinued, the women's version, not the men's version, the women's version had that, that watermelon, like ozonic watery thing happening at the same time, that meets a subdued version of Calvin Klein's Escape. So Calvin Klein's escape can be like, boom, bombastic in your face, all encompassing, knock you out and sometimes cloying. <laughs> but a subdued version of that in this is what this reminds me of. And this was very much crowd pleasing, at least in this house and very easy to wear. So big thumbs up on this. And then a fragrance that I sampled, enjoyed and took a chance on purchasing. I didn't pay full price for it because you know, I like a good discount, but the discount was not super significant, but enough for me to jump on it because it did take a chunk off of a very pricey fragrance. Amouage Guidance. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> first of all, the bottle is just beautiful with this sort of milky, muted, nudie, pinky color and the creamy top an emblem on the front here. The fragrance itself, when I sampled it, I would have described as being a floral, mostly a floral, maybe even woody fragrance, I think is how I described it. And yes, there are some lovely florals in here. I've got this sprayed on and wow. It So there's a nutty accord, I think it's hazelnut that I didn't pick up when I sampled, but I absolutely pick up on skin and a beautiful pear that's here that's almost like a really sweet, like a cooked pear. Imagine a cooked sweet pear along with like a nutty accord with some florals with a little bit of woodiness in the background deep long lasting beautiful projecting sweet feminine unique it's all of the things all of the things polarizing some people hate it can't understand why <laughs> but to each their own and that's the thing about fragrance people like different things and this is very much a winner for me love so friends that is the may fragrance awards I would love to hear in the comments before you go, what was your favorite fragrance of the month of May? Tell us so that we can share in the joy of smelling good. I appreciate you hanging out with me this long. If you're still here, you're a real one. Have a great one. See you in the next video. Take care.